Hello, viewers. Welcome back to another episode of How to Beat Beth Harmon. So we had started a game earlier against the Beth Harmon bot who claims to be 2400. I got a winning position, but I might be screwing it up. Let's see if I can finish the job. So first thing I want to do is play Rook A8 so I can prepare to advance the A pawn in some variations. King G6 is a very important move. So what I was threatening was to play pawn to A7 and then Rook F8 check followed by promotion. So black has to bring her king back in order to stop me from giving that check in that sequence. So she'll have to bring her king back to be close to g7 or h7. Now here it's actually very important to not play a7. That seems rather counterintuitive. Here's why. a7, king g7 is actually an instant draw. The reason? I can't promote my pawn without getting support from my king. My rook is tied to the pawn because if my rook moves away, so she'll just capture it. So to try to support the pawn, I gotta play like king g2 and bring the king over there. If the pawn is on a7 though, my king has nowhere to hide from checks. So actually, I gotta keep that pawn in a6. By keeping the pawn there, my king can potentially hide from on a7, and that's how I can dodge the checks and hopefully convert this. Now, there are still some issues to worry about. While my king's marching all the way over to a7, she's going to be devouring my g3 and h4 pawns. Once those guys are out of the way, her own h pawn could potentially become a queen. So it's going to be a race between can I get my king there fast enough while she is grabbing my pawns. Now we're past the point of no return. If she attacks my g3 pawn, my king cannot get back in time to save it. I believe I am faster in this race. I guess we'll find out if I'm right. King g7 looks too slow to me. I thought she should just start hunting down my pawn immediately with rook a3. Um, oh, maybe there's a point to it. So if she had played rook a3 immediately, then I could play king c5. And then if rook takes g3, a7, and now if rook a3, there's a very important trap to know about. I would just play rook h8, and then if rook takes a7, now rook h7 check will win the rook. So what she's doing here is playing king g7 so that there is no rook h8 followed by rook h7. So it does make sense. So now I just keep bringing my king over. Next step, rook b8, so I can play king a8, a7, and then king b7, followed by promoting the pawn. Actually, I have a better idea. Let's play rook b6. So what's going to happen is that 
I'm going to promote and she'll have to sacrifice her rook for my pawn. Then it's going to be a match between my rook and her pawn. For her pawn to have any chance, it's got to stick close to her king. So when I play rook b6, I'm cutting off her king from supporting the pawn. That's a very important idea in rook endings. Now I have to play rook b8 in order to promote. I think king b5 is just lights out. The rook cannot stop the pawn from promoting. So we've got this. Oh, I guess it's not quite over yet. In order to keep her rook from the a file, I got to keep my king on the B file. But if I keep my king on the B file, she can just keep checking me. So I got to play king C4, allowing rook A5. But then I'm still in time to stop the pawn. So yeah, I am, waste, I am still winning. So now I just bring my king over to collect the pawn. If she tries to push it with h2, then I play rook a1 and block the promotion. There are a couple of ways to win king and rook versus king. What I usually do is what I call the box method. I just try to put the enemy king in a smaller and smaller box. So I'll start with rook f8 check to drive the king away from the f file. So now rook f4 makes the box smaller, taking away more squares from her king. With rook e4, the box shrinks again. Now the king can't go anywhere on the e file. Oops, I guess king c5 was inconsistent. I should have played rook b5 instead to just keep shrinking the box, but we can still win this. Avoiding rook b7, which would be stalemate and a draw. And that's checkmate. We did it. So that wraps up our game against the fifth Beth Harmon bot. Um, definitely challenging, but the rating of 2400 is certainly an exaggeration. So I guess in the next video in our series, I'll take on the next Beth Harmon bot, which is supposedly 2500. We'll see if that's true or not. So. Don't forget to subscribe. Hope that taught you something and inspired you to play better chess.